Hello everyone, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. And I am Patrick Kirby. And today is episode four of PTZ Optics Live, and we're going to be talking about simultaneous video streaming. Uh, that's a really important piece of PTZ Optics, so we're excited to be talking about that. Uh, every Friday we talk about technology, and um, you can actually tweet us. Uh, we have a Twitter feed running. Um, that you can actually tweet to PTZ Optics Live or just at PTZ Optics yeah. and that'll pop up and yeah we're really excited today um, to talk about um, simultaneous streaming with PTZ Optics. Yeah really cool stuff that you can do with this. Uh, there's streaming's a very hot topic right now whether it's um, churchstreaming.tv or, or Wowzo or um, Wirecast. Uh, YouTube Live is, is obviously a free one that we use we leverage um, so there's a lot of a lot of interesting applications coming here yeah so let's go ahead and get right to it but before we do that I want to w show a couple things off one is the iPad Pat go ahead and show that off so I want to show a little bit about how we do this live streaming and uh, one of the things we do is uh, we use vMix and vMix has a um, what's called a web server and this web server actually allows you to control the entire live stream. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn off the... Um, so what that just did was... Actually, no, that's, this is the Twitter feed here, T11. So that actually just turned off the Twitter feed. So uh, we can actually just use this iPad to not only um, show, uh, you know, do, control the entire show, we can also wirelessly use it to present documents during our live stream. And Pat, yes. that's what I'd like you to go ahead and show off now, yep. is uh, because we're using something called Zoom.us. Currently. Um, also, while you mentioned that, notice there, there are no wires. So if somebody in another room wanted to take control of the broadcast, they could do that as well. Yeah, and that's going to be really important. We're going to talk about that. Um, so really quickly here, uh, what I just did was I went to share.zoom.us and since we have a, um, the Zoom, um, we're running this meeting through Zoom, Zoom all we have to do is actually type in the meeting ID, Pat, which is um, 128-947-1111. And as soon as Pat does that, it's going to give him the ability to um, actually oh, open, it in, open it in Zoom. So it's we had saying, the, we had the app downloaded. <laughs> so it's saying, okay, what's your name, uh, Marth? This is actually Martha's iPad. Let's just go ahead and continue with that. And it's going to ask us, um, you know, it's going to join us to the meeting, and it's going to give us the capabilities um, to wirelessly present. And it gives us a couple different questions there. I am going to wirelessly present a website URL. And I'd like to do um, live.ptzoptics.com. And that is actually where we host our live streaming. And we also have um, our, all, of, all of the information about our live stream is available at live.ptzoptics.com. So here it is here. So we just wirelessly shared um, a document. It could be a website. It could be a lot of different things directly with... Um, our live broadcast and our live stream. Yep. Photos, so um, um, we can do photos, Dropbox, any website, PowerPoint, Excel, all that stuff. You know, whatever. Um, you know. And what we want to do here is I want to go ahead and show how we stream. So that's a PDF document. It's available for download. Anyone who wants to download it, print it out, and it goes over exactly how we do our live streaming. And I wanted to actually use this iPad to uh, actually kind of show off exactly how we're doing it. Um, annotate, annotate do a little annotation, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, it's really easy to use. Um, so what we can do here is um, I can click the annotation button, and I'm going to click the highlighter. And what that's going to allow me to do is a highlight over this wiring diagram that shows what we're doing. So we have a very basic video conferencing system. Uh, we've got a PTZ Optics camera plugged in via USB to an Intel Nook. Uh, we have a Holopod Air, which is a wireless USB speakerphone. Right here. And then we also have um, Zoom video conferencing. We talked about that. Um, and we have a new promotion where we're going to give Zoom away for free. 
with every PTZ Optics camera, yeah. and which is a great free way to live stream. Yeah. And it's and a free connect. one. Yeah, it's a free one month professional license, so mm -hmm. it's unlimited. It's it's not the free license. They do have a free license, but we're giving away a professional license. So that's uh, unlimited video conferencing, up to 50 participants, interactive video. Yeah. And this is just one way to live stream with the PTZ Optics. There's obviously a lot of different ways, but we wanted to show off yeah. how we're doing it. Um, and we're taking the HDMI from that Intel Nook and we're splitting it. So we're sending one to the display that we're looking at and keeping track of everything, right and then one to our epifan.av.io, which we have here. We're going to show it. It takes that entire video conference and makes it a video input to our vMix solution. Uh, it could be Wirecast, vMix, YouTube Live, yeah. any software-based video conferencing or live streaming system now can use that entire video conference as part of the live stream. Um, so that's how we can add over video overlays, our titles, our lower thirds, all of the video broadcasting systems, and then stream out to YouTube Live. So we wanted to show that off, show how we do that. Uh, I think it, it, it's, 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 we think it's, it's fairly innovative and, you know, tying in all the video conferencing stuff such as the, um, yeah. the screen sharing and all of that um, has been really big. Yep. And, and the applications here are, are numerous, whether you have a, uh, you know, a, a round table, um, you're, you're, you have a meeting with a bunch of professionals, uh, you have a, a meeting with, uh, you know, teachers, stuff like that. So we wanted to show off uh, live annotation. Uh, which was which was kind of cool. Uh, you can do like weatherman stuff with that. You can do a ton yeah. of different things with that. Um, we're showing off a little bit of um, video overlays. We were showing off the Twitter feed, and then we were also showing off how we can control the entire live broadcast with our iPad, smartphone, computer on your network with vMix, even outside your network. Uh, if you port that that to through your router, we can talk about that if customers are interested in, in controlling the entire broadcast from anywhere in the world. All of this stuff is is available now, and uh, we want to talk about Pat just getting back from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, um, we were down there the the uh, worship and facility expo. And facility expo. Um, it was a great time. Thanks for everyone that came out to our booth. By the way, we we had a a, a lot of fun meeting uh, a lot of you. Um, and one of the uh, the biggest things that people were asking about is they want to do everything remotely. They they want volunteers to help. Mm -hmm. Okay, with these with these church streams. And uh, one way to encourage volunteers to do this is to give them the tools they need from their home. Camera control from their home. Broadcast control from their home. And we can show you how to do all of those things, and we're going to talk about it today. Uh, and part of our um, broadcast is going to be about simultaneous streaming. And part of that is sending the video feed to the live stream and sending another uh, controls uh, availability to people outside your network, so from home, anywhere in the world. Yeah, far end camera control. So let's zoom into the uh, camera here. And I got the, uh, not the iPad, but the back of the camera. And we want to show off um, the simultaneous streaming capabilities. Uh, you can see here we've got an HD-SDI input, which is really popular in the broadcast industry. Um, you know, people might connect that to a new tech TriCaster, might connect it to a capture card coming mm -hmm. into a com computer. We're running our entire broadcast off of a laptop, a regular laptop. Uh, we've got our HDMI. Uh, people use that for confidence monitors a lot of times. Yep. Um, people, people did ask us about um, live streaming. We did have a couple of questions about live streaming. And the PTZ Optics does have its own RTMP uh, stream that you, yes, can, that you can set up. But also with, with our USB model in particular, uh, you do. We did get this question. You do. We recommend an i5, preferably an i7, uh, quad core um, computer. So yeah, that that okay. question did come up a couple of times. So um, and a lot of people are using our joystick controller. Uh, we didn't we didn't bring that out. We showed that on our last episode. But if you're using the joystick controller, and let's say you're taking your HD SDI into um, you know a Black Magic piece or a new Tech TriCaster or you know a streaming box. It's nice to have the HDMI simultaneous so that you can actually take that HDMI to a little display right next to your joystick and see exactly what you're doing mm -hmm. and what camera you're controlling. Then uh, finally, we have our IP port here. And this is our IP control. Um, we've shown that off also in other episodes, so we're not going to go fully into it. But the point is, is that all three of these are simultaneous. 
So you can do USB to your computer, HDMI to your conference monitor, and uh, actually network control directly um, on the same camera. Yep, and that just leaves it at a, a very flexible deployment. Uh, you know, it's 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 kind of a, a, a one solution fits all. You know, you're, you're generally going to have a broadcast scenario where you either have HDMI um, directly to other TVs. We did get people asking about spillover rooms or, or calming rooms, um, or you know, maybe uh, sending it to a TV right. Right, right, in you know the smaller chapel. We got got some questions about that. Yeah, so that's that's, a good point. that's HDMI right to, uh, you know, a, a flat screen television. Um, right. You can SDI. extend the HDMI over Cat Five very easily. Yeah. Uh, there's a company called Havavision, H A V A V I S I O N, who have a really affordable Cat Five HDMI yep. extension. Right game. around a hundred bucks, really. Yeah, and you can just take Cat Five, go up to three hundred feet away to your receiver box, and now you've got HDMI for uh, TV in the lobby. Yep. Or something like that. Or um, we did have one guy that was, uh, he actually had a pretty unique setup. It was a, um, a camera that he wanted to kind of get down onto a baptismal font. Because the, you know, mm. in, in, in normal baptisms, right, you only two or three people are seeing the baby, right? The mm. ones kind yeah, of right, right up over, or over, the, uh, over the, the bath or... Um, so that was that was an interesting application, and, and he had projectors, so it's bound to have an HDMI on there, um, and and then you also have the SDI for for your your standard broadcast equipment, and then the the Ethernet, if you if you prefer to live stream it as well, you know, yeah. set it send it up right up onto YouTube or ChurchStreaming.tv. We met them there. That they were now nice. now with the Ethernet streaming in particular, um, we've had some customers talking about that. Sometimes the network can introduce half a second of latency, yeah. a quarter second of latency, and that's not good when you're live streaming. Uh, you need the audio to be exactly synced up to the video. Now there are circumstances where it wouldn't matter. For example, let's Remote say um, you know, you've got a big crowd of people and you're shooting from behind and you're not looking at somebody's lips right away. Um, it can get away with a half second. Yeah. What yeah. if it's just, uh, you know, you're looking at a baby. Well, the baby's not talking. Yeah. You know, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, remote viewers. Remote viewers, anything that's kind of like not talking. You know, any, you know, it could be an altar. It could be uh, a shot of the, the, the traffic outside. It could be anything. It could be the shot of the clouds. That's fine. But if you do, are you doing like a live broadcast like we're doing now where the audio and video must be synced up, you're going to prefer HDSDI. USB or HDMI, those have no latency at all. In fact, it might be like one frame. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's with, one or two you frames. Know, one or two frames, which is like unnoticeable. An eighth of a second or something. It's, it's even less than that. It, it's, it's absolutely unnoticeable. So that's what you would probably prefer. But the network control can still allow you to remotely view the entire video stream from anywhere in the world, assuming that your network is configured properly. We could talk about that. Yeah. We have. We have a blog on our website, which is seven ways to take far end camera control from our website, uh, to, from the camera. Take a look at that um, to get because there's so many ways to do camera control. And last week we talked about camera control. Yes. The whole episode, so we won't. So if you're bore you. if you're watching this now and wondering how we did it, check out last week's episode. Yeah. Take it's a look at last week's episode. It's on YouTube Live. Um, so we won't go into that. So camera controls, but it's 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 really easy. We we talked all about it in our last episode. Yeah. Um, far end camera control we talked about. IP control we talked about. Presets. Presets. So let's talk about a couple different scenarios where the simultaneous streaming can be. I mean, we kind of did just talk about it. Yeah. Um, but you know, let, let's talk about two or three different ways. And one of them, I'm going to talk about a cool one where you're filming sports. A lot of people who are filming sports know that uh, you know frame rate's really important. Um, you might want to do a high frame rate and a lower resolution. We can do 720p 60 to accommodate those things there. And uh, you know, in 2016, we're going to be able to do 1080p 60. So if you are uh, streaming in 1080p and you need to do 60 frames a second for sports, uh, we're we're going to be there for you. Right now, we do 720p 60. Um, and let's let's talk about that for a second. So, okay. so we have a customer who goes out and he films football games, and what he does is he takes the camera and he sticks it up a pole 30 feet in the sky. He runs a HDMI down and he runs a USB down, 30 feet down. So he plugs the USB into his computer and he streams that out to the cloud. He plugs the HDMI 
into a monitor so he can see exactly what he's doing, doesn't have to worry about you know anything at the computer. And then he's got also an RS-232 connection to a joystick controller. So he's just sitting there, he sets up his live stream, maybe he's got the scoreboard overlaid, he's got some commercials and different things, and overlays onto his video that he's streaming out to the cloud. But uh, his camera control and his HDMI from the camera to see what he's doing is all controlled directly from the camera. Um, so that's a really great scenario where he's using yeah. two different video sources and the camera control to do a live broadcast of, of a sports event. Yep, in, in, you know, it's, it's great to have that local confidence monitor and or, you know, spillover TVs. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to kind of think of a display or some sort of um, input that doesn't accept an HDMI anymore. You know, yeah. it really has become the standard. Um, it's going to be more know, affordable than anything with HDSDI for sure because you can get consumer things that, that, that will support it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about another scenario. Um, well, we've got customers who do live streaming as their main video output. So let's say uh, you want to, we've, we, we have a customer who does live broadcasts um, for corporations. Yep. And what they like to do is, you know, they didn't want to uh, hire an expensive CDN or anything. So what they did is they actually used the audio input on our PTZ Optics camera, which is the one way to make the video streaming and the audio be on the same level. And you can now use that IP port to stream to um, a content delivery network. You know, uh, you can pull two 1080p signals directly off the camera. But what YouTube you might want to do is use YouTube Live or something along those lines to stream to thousands and thousands. So what they do is they use Ustream because they're a corporation and they wanted some features that YouTube Live didn't have. They wanted to yeah. password protect it and do some of the other things that Ustream does. And they took that audio input, put it in with the video, streamed it out to YouTube Live and allowed, or, or Ustream, and allowed thousands of their employees to, to view the CEO's uh, communications. But again, in that scenario, they were using simultaneous streaming because they were streaming from the camera directly to their computer for camera control. And then they were streaming the second stream to Ustream so that they could do a lot of streaming. Yep. A lot of streaming. Yep. Um, you can think seminars, um, training seminars, uh, as well as things like shareholder meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of accountability that comes from, from stockholders and those... Uh, Shareholder meetings. Uh, a lot of uh, last. I mean, I I have very few stocks, and, and I don't mess around with it too much. But I did get a uh, an email saying saying there was a meeting, and and I I could only join via tele, tele, teleconference. It was only, only teleconference. I, I didn't get much from it. Um, but yeah, the, this is a, a really easy way to kind of get a, a simple shareholder meeting stream. Um, extremely affordable. Yeah. No, that, that, that's, a, that's a great example. Um, all right. Well, you know, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, we don't want to take up a lot, of, a lot of time for this webinar. It was a, uh, you know, we are live streaming on YouTube Live. We explained how we did it. Um, we're going to do another video with the, with the CEO and creator of vMix, hopefully next week. Yep. He's in the United States right now. Um, he, we were just visiting him at Streaming Media West, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really nice little show right outside Los Angeles, California for Streaming Media. Um, this is our AV.io. Uh, we talked about how we were using that um, with our Have a Vision HDMI splitter. And, um, you know, Pat just got back from WFX. Yep. We had a lot of trade shows this week. Great. Um, so hopefully we will be meeting with VMix uh, next week. Yeah, that'd hopefully. be great. We'll see what he says, Martin Sinclair. Um, and at that point, we would really like to dig into the details of how we're streaming. Um, so we'll hopefully have that available as well. Um, we're available at sales at ptzoptics.com. Yeah. Uh, feel free to join our YouTube subscribe page. Yeah. So uh, there's our YouTube button there. Yep, we're all we're all over the internet. So if you want to tweet, email sales at PTZ Optics. We have a, a, a nice chat feature on our site. Um, lots of blogs and how tos, and uh, you can also always call in. There's a number on the site as well. So thank you very much. We've been your hosts, Paul Richards and Patrick Kirby here. Um, feel free to join. This is a live webinar, so you can join this uh, live webinar at any time. Uh, jump in, ask questions, show us your room, ask us about different things, join via video and audio, invite your whole team. We just got done a webinar with 15 people. Yeah. Um, 
It's great to have you guys join, and uh, have a nice day. Everyone enjoy your weekend. Yeah, great weekend, uh, and hopefully it's a nice one. <laughs> Bye, guys. Take care.